there's a bit of contention and some confusion on where this virus is really hitting people hard. So there are two popular narratives that the left has really been pushing over the past few days. And the funny thing is, they have these two different narratives and they wind up conflicting with one another. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But the newest one that they've come out with is basically it's hitting Trump voters because those are the ones that are going out and they're moving around and they, they're not listening to the doctors. They're not sheltering in place. And so really Trump country is the one that's getting hit really hard recently. And this was a popular talking point on Georgia and Florida. You remember that we were actually talking about that just a, a few minutes ago, that when Georgia and Florida, especially because Brian Kemp and Ron DeSantis, who were the governors there, have been very outspoken, very vocal Trump supporters. When they did that and when they opened up, even despite President Trump actually bashing Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, for doing so, that when that took place, everybody on the left was predicting that Georgia and Florida would become the new New York, that basically everything was going to go down the crapper, everything was going to hit the fan immediately afterward, and here we are, about two and a half weeks afterward, which, by the way, the incubation period of this virus is about two weeks, and uh, their hospitalizations, down. Their total new cases, their seven-day average, down. Opposite has actually happened. They opened up, and they're doing better. Now, I don't think they're doing better specifically because they opened up. I think they're actually doing so in spite of that, and I think the fact that they are both states that have high levels of heat and humidity, they're southern states, that plays a pretty big role. I think the fact that large portions of the state are very sparsely populated because, yeah, you've got Atlanta and Miami, but let's be honest, pretty much everything outside of that, with the exception of some of the mid-population mid, uh, cities like, you know, your Savannas and your Jacksonvilles and that kind of thing, Pensacolas, I mean, it, it's basically a southern state everywhere except for those big me major metropolitan areas like Atlanta and Miami and, and St. Petersburg, Tampa area, that kind of thing. And so I think that that's playing a much larger role in this anyway. And they said, yeah, our, the way that we're looking at it, our state is probably okay to open up. And they were right. And so that one completely fell apart, but they're still trying to figure out a way to pin this on Trump voters and to try to make it out as though Trump voters are the ones that are spreading this. It really is incredible. And, and this talking point gained new momentum, even though the narrative in Florida and Georgia fell apart with a new leaked White House report. And, and what this report basically says uh, is that there are certain areas in the heartland, certain rural areas that are seeing an uptick in cases, which is really not surprising, but listen to the way that they spin it. This one's via NBC News. Alabama, ah, first mention there. Alabama, Kentucky, Iowa, Missouri, Nebraska, and Tennessee, for example, have no stay-at-home orders, according to the task force map. In other states, where restrictions are being put in place or repealed at the local level, some counties are expecting surges. Dallas and Fort Bend counties in Texas where decisions are made locally, are on a locations watch list because they have, rec they have increases in numbers of cases of 116.8% and 64.8% respectively. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you really need to be made aware of here. First of all, uh, when you're looking at this, of course, when you start repealing those orders, and again, I say this because what you're actually seeing is that the government is following somewhat lagging behind the people. The people are getting out, they're moving around. Well, of course, that is going to increase your rate of new cases. It is going to increase your rate of uh, pretty much everything else on this. And so that really shouldn't be something that comes as a surprise. And so this is more of a, well, yeah, duh moment that some of these rural counties, especially ones that have been mostly secluded this whole time, are going to be seeing those increases. Uh, he, uh, whoop, uh, sorry about that, I lost my place there. Uh, but here's the thing, in the states that saw that surge early, as we were just talking about, that surge was quickly followed by a decline. And so that's the thing that they're kind of leaving out here. And they're not really explaining is so that they're talking about 
these surges happening directly after the rules or the restrictions or the laws are repealed, but they're not talking about in other places that we've already seen this happen, what you saw immediately following that was a decline. And another thing that you really need to, to be aware of is they're trying to make it sound like it's, it's primarily Trump voters that are spreading this because of the locations and, and it being in rural areas. And of course, your rural areas tend to go more Republican and, and certainly did for Trump in the last 2020. But if you adjust for population and if you look at the statistics just from the other day, because I don't want to just take general numbers because then, of course, the obvious counter is, well, yeah, you're looking at the overall picture, but this report deals specifically with what's been happening recently. So what I did was because the only time period that I could find consistent numbers of and a consistent um, rubric to grade on, so we're comparing apples to apples, was two days ago. I actually compiled all of this on Tuesday night. And so if you look at that, if you look at the number of cases that happened in that time period, adjusted for population, of course, because since we're dealing with rural areas, we want to make sure if we're comparing them to major population centers that we're doing so on a fair, even playing ground. The 10 states with the highest rate of new cases are all deep blue states, except for two, South Dakota and Iowa. And South Dakota has a very small population. And by the way, the governor of South Dakota who never implemented any kind of stay-at-home order and, and to this day still doesn't have one, uh, their numbers are still relatively low. They have one of the lowest death counts in the country, even if you adjust for population and take into account their low population. And again, th those are the highest rate of new cases for that one day. But if eight out of the 10 states are deep blue states, m primarily that have not lifted these orders, you can't make the case that those were Trump voters. And then when you compare them based on their new deaths per capita as of Tuesday, only three of the 10 worst are not deep blue states, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Michigan. In Mississippi and Louisiana, it's fair to call them Republican states, even though Louisiana leans blue sometimes in some specific areas. Uh, but Michigan's a purple state. It went for Donald Trump in 2016, but it went for Barack Obama four years before that. In fact, nobody was expecting Trump to even take Michigan because it's been a reliably blue state for a long time. It's just now getting some Republican influence. They wound up recalling a Republican governor and putting Whitmer in, who is currently in there now. And so at best, you could say two out of the eight are Trump country. And so this idea that it's really the Trump voters that are causing these hot zones and they're the ones that are causing the increase, it's just laughable when you look at the recent data. It simply does not line up with the numbers. And this was by far my favorite of all of the headlines that were covering this. If you look at this article from Salon, you'll look at and see the headline here. Leaked White House data shows infection spiking more than 1,000% in rural areas that were backed by Trump. So again, they're trying to push this narrative that it's primarily Trump voters and people that supported Trump, people in those uh, secluded rural areas that are really seeing those spikes happen right now. This is part of that same article. I'll go ahead and read it. But a leaked coronavirus task force report obtained by NBC News shows th that some parts of the country, rural counties in Tennessee and Kansas, have seen cases balloon by more than 1,000% in a matter of one week, more than 400%. J Dr. John Ross, a professor at Harvard Medical School, appoint, uh, pointed out that all but one of the top 10 counties saw the largest increases voted for President Trump in 2016. Now, here's the thing. If it's a study that specifically looks at rural counties, of course, they're going to be counties that voted for President Trump. Like I just said, that always happens. There are very, very few rural counties in the entire country that ever look, uh, that ever wind up going Democrat, at least in recent history, in the past like 30 years. And so if it's a study specifically looking at rural counties, well, duh, all of the counties are going to be Trump country. That would be like uh, this new outburst is happening in cities and uh, those cities all voted for Hillary Clinton. Well, well, yeah, they're, they're cities. That's what you expect. But anyway, so th they're very misleading on that. And another thing, too, that's very misleading, they're talking about a 1,000% increase. 
Well, if you're talking about a county with a low population, first of all, those counties tend to get the virus slower because they're more sparsely populated anyway. You may recall that when we were monitoring it right here in Alabama, that we were looking at uh, some counties that had no cases for a very long time. Geneva County, a very rural county in South Alabama, for example, uh, we were like a month into this thing before they had one case. And I'm not talking about one death, I'm talking about one case. And when you look at, uh, I think it was Wilcox, Wilcox was the other one that held out for a really long time. Uh, Otaga County, I remember that, I, I believe Montgomery was somewhere in the like 200, 300 range when Otaga County only had three or four. And so it, it's a big showy piece and a big headline that's going to grab you a lot of clicks by saying, it's increasing a thousand percent. And, and 400% in, in one county over the span of a week. But you do realize that increasing 400% would be going from one case to five cases in a week. And in a thousand percent since the beginning of this, that would be a county that went from one percent to eleven, or sorry, from one to eleven, over the course of this thing. Now, I'm not saying that's exactly the numbers or that's exactly what's happening. I'm saying you could see that, and you're like, "Hey, this Podunk County out in the middle of nowhere went from having one case of coronavirus to eleven cases of coronavirus. How can we spin this to make it sound more impactful? Let's say it increased by a thousand percent. Yeah, but really, you still only have ten guys." <laughs> that didn't have it beforehand. It's an incredibly misleading thing, and that's especially, it's especially easy to play with the numbers like that when you have a low population like you do in rural counties. And, and that's why it's so important to look at the recent stats and, and try to look at these things objectively instead of just throwing out red meat, or I guess in the left's case, tofu, for their audience there. <laughs> My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.